Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unboxing Stuff. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Can Bowl KBC 415A Pneumatic Can Crusher. So let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box. I'll show you how to put it together and then we'll do some testing and crush cans, see how it works. Okay, let's go ahead and cut the tape. Alright, we got a little bit of protective bubble wrap here. Looks like everything's all packaged pretty tightly in here. Alright, so, so we have some instructions. We have some thread locker and some mounting screws. A pair of gloves. A piece, unknown. Miscellaneous bag of tools. Primary box of the unit here. This is our pneumatic ram. Feels pretty heavy duty here. And then it looks like we have some pre installed air lines in here that I'm sure we'll hook stuff up to. So let's go ahead and get this bag open here. So looks like we have some fittings and thread sealant. We have our actual button that will activate the ram. Some mounting screws and looks like all the tools you'll need to get this thing assembled. So let me go ahead and reorganize this and then I'll walk you through putting this together and getting it going. So the first thing I want to show you here before I actually get started is within their manual they actually include all the different manuals to all their different models. So the first thing you're going to do is flip to the page that has the model number which you purchased and then we'll start working through these instructions. So let's go ahead and get at it. So step one is to remove all the screws holding on this back plate. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and we'll take this and go ahead and set it aside. And our next step is going to be installing the two PL6-02 fittings onto the cylinder itself. You see we have these blue protective inserts, so you just go ahead and pop that out first. Keeps any debris from getting inside. So we'll go ahead and get these installed. We're going to use our O wrench here. And you can still move these around to adjust them the way you need to when we're ready to actually install it. All right, step three is going to be installing the cylinder on top here. You're going to slide this in here. Then you're going to take your screws labeled H with a lock washer on them. And you're going to go ahead and screw into these holes right in here. Now 
I recommend getting them all put in finger tight first before you come back in with your correct Allen wrench and tighten them all the way up. All right, now everything's nice and snug. Okay, our next piece we're gonna install is the feed plate. And we'll be using our smaller screws here. And our middle-sized Allen key with washers here. And that's just gonna go up against this outer wall. and it already has built-in threads. All right, those are nice and snug. All right, our next step is we're gonna go ahead and take our back plate and put it on the wall where we actually want the unit to sit. I think I'm gonna make mine flush up against the corner here. I'm gonna go ahead and mark out where each of the holes needs to go. All right, now we need to go ahead and install our screws. I'm gonna use a stud finder here. See, it's like these screws are just on the border so they should be within a piece of two by four. However, these screws over here are not. So we'll need to drill holes and put in our inserts and the screws there, and then we can drill directly into the wood over here. Okay, for my first two holes, I'm gonna drill a 5 16 hole. Then go ahead and put the inserts in. My second hole, I'm gonna do a 764 pilot hole. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put the screws in. Yeah, they don't need to be all the way bottomed out. So be careful if you're using a drill. All right, let's go ahead and test fit here. All right, now I have them all nice and snug, so it's gonna be a good secure fit, but not so tight that I can't put it on and take it off. Okay, this next step, which was not in the instructions, though I know it's the next step that needs to be done before we move on, is gonna be to take these tubes and slide them into the fittings. And you're just going to press in on the fitting. You can see it moves there a little bit. And then just push the tube in flush and you can kind of feel just a little grab that happens. Let's give it a little tug. You know that's fitting properly. And I'll turn that down. And then we'll do the same thing up top here. Press the fitting in. Insert the tube. You'll feel a little bit of pressure and you'll feel it fit into place. Then just turn it down. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and reinstall our rear plate. I'll go ahead and recompress that up first. And everywhere there's a hole, we're gonna go ahead and fit it with a screw. And we're gonna get them all finger tight first, and then we'll come back and snug everything down.
All right, let's go ahead and tighten them all up. All right, one more thing that's not on the instructions that I'm gonna go ahead and do is just fill these last little holes here that are not populated with screws and snug all the screws down on the front as well. All right, next up is gonna be to install our mechanical button here on the front and it just screws directly into here. Uh, it does not say to put on Teflon, but I'm assuming that's why it was included in the kit for these threads right here. Okay, lost the battery there, but all that I've done so far is finish screwing this knob in. So the next step will be to hang this guy over there on the wall and use the included screwdriver to snug up the screws. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and put it up to the screws on the walls. Slip it over. And slide it down into place. We're then gonna take the screwdriver and just snug these up a little bit. Okay, now for the most gratifying part. And there it is. Now let's go ahead and apply some air and see what this thing can do. Okay, so we have our air pressure applied and let's just go ahead and show you how this works. You're gonna press the button labeled power force the ram down and then you let go and it lets the ram pop back up so let's go ahead and try our first can we're just going to drop it in press the power button can fell right out the bottom just like that so let's do two in rapid succession Just like that, it works great. Okay, for a test here, we're gonna compare my traditional can crusher, just manual, to the Canbowl KBC415A. So I'm gonna crush, crush five cans, and we'll see how long it takes to do it in the crusher, and then five cans in the can bowl. So there's a can crusher. I've done this a billion times, so I'm pretty decent at it. Um, I'd say that's probably approximate average speed for that. So now let's go on to this guy up here. And there's my air compressor. I have it off so it doesn't make awkward noises during the filming here, but as you can see that was pretty quick, pretty much as fast as I could get them in there. Uh, it crushed them and assuming you had your air compressor on to keep the pressure up, launched them all right out. So it'll be interesting to go back and see what that time looks like in editing. So a safety tip, here I'm going to go ahead and disconnect and then press the button up here just to make sure there's no air before I stick my fingers in to retrieve the can that didn't blow out. So always remove air if you're gonna use this uh, type of machine. You don't wanna risk losing any of these guys to save a little time crushing cans. Okay, so as you guys saw there, that thing crushes cans pretty much as fast as you can get them in there. So I'm pretty well impressed with that. 
Uh, one thing I noticed about this unit versus some other ones is the actual plunger on the bottom there. It, it is made of plastic like other units, but this one's really thick and heavy duty. And I don't think you're gonna be busting the plunger when you're crushing cans with this. I think it's gonna hold up quite well. Um, some, the, I guess the one downside that I have found was that some of the things you need to do are not in the instructions. Uh, I did point them out in the video, like connecting the air lines and then going through and ensuring all the screws are in place because uh, some of them are not. So that's something to keep in mind. Just pay attention as you're putting it together and you shouldn't have any problems. Uh, another thing is they did include thread lock, uh, which I did not do at all just to see how everything worked without it because they didn't specifically call for it in the instructions. But you know, this is probably the best bet. I'll, I may even go back through and undo all the screws, throw some thread lock, uh, at least the ones that are functionally keeping things running uh, if they have any problems backing out. But I'll run it as is for now and we'll see. And I'll let you know if I do have any problems with any screws backing out. But with how snug I put everything and how little uh, part movement there is in there, I don't think it'll be an issue. But it is nice that they included it just in case you need it. Other than that, uh, I have a handful of parts back here. They, they include some extra parts, some extra airline, uh, an extra elbow, and then you have some other miscellaneous screw hardware that they included, which is nice in case you lost something or in case something broke or whatever, you'd have some spare parts to get it back going. So from my limited use with this thing so far, I'm pretty impressed and I'm actually really excited to uh, show this thing off to friends and family and uh, I'm sure it's going to be a big hit with the kids. And on that note with the kids, that's one of the reasons where I mounted it is up higher than uh, you know would be necessary for something like this is because I want to keep it out of the reach of little kids and with adult supervision I can allow them to use it uh, safely. So that's one thing you don't want to have it set up somewhere where little kids can get their fingers in and start pressing buttons especially if you have it full time hooked up with your air pressure. So that's another secondary safety thing you can do is remove your air pressure away from that. Uh, that way someone doesn't walk by, press the button and then have a terrible thing happen, you know, lose a finger or something like that. So safety is absolutely paramount when you're dealing with something like this. However, if you're smart and you uh, take precautions, then it shouldn't be an issue. And it's definitely gonna save you a lot of time if you're going through crushing a lot of cans. Um, I imagine if you wanted to, you could go through an absolute ton of cans in a relative short amount of time. So uh, I could see somebody who's doing recycling as kind of a little side business to get some extra money, or if you just have a lot of cans you go through in your family and you just want to have a nice way to organize them and store them away in a more compact manner uh, for, for actually taking into the recyclers, you know, I think it's definitely something worth looking into. So at this point, from what I've seen, I definitely think that this is a good option if you're looking for a pneumatic can crusher, kind of want to have something that's fun to show the, the uh, garage crew, or just something to be practical that you can use to efficiently crush cans. Uh, it's definitely got that covered. The one nice thing that about this is if you're doing a lot of cans as well, you're not going to get tired as you go along where with the manual can crusher, I can do quite a few cans in a run and I can get through it, but by the end you start getting a little fatigued where the nice thing about this one is you can just keep on going. As long as you have cans to crush and your air compressor's putting out pressure, you're rocking and rolling, you're having a good time. So definitely check out the link below. I'll put a link to this uh, exact model down below and they do have other models as well that I may do videos on in the future. So let me know what you guys think. If you'd like to see some of the other models as well, we can kind of compare and contrast this model to the other models. So at this point in time, I'd just like to say thank you for watching. Check out the links below and keep on crushing.